Hello players and data hoarders, I've shown you the hardware in my little personal home server, so let's take a look at the software that's running on it. This screen recording is captured on the Logitech C920, so if you like how it looks, there's a link for this in the video description below. Okay, so we'll start off going through the software that I use most often. Okay, so this is StableBit Drive Pool. This manages all of my hard drive. It pulls all individual drives like a JBOD, which is just a bunch of disks, and puts them into one big hard drive. So here I've got one, two, oh, it says right there, seven. Seven hard drives, eight terabyte, four terabyte, four terabyte, four terabyte, four terabyte, a small 500 gig, and a one terabyte drive. These are all pulled into one 22.2 terabyte drive. And if we go to the file manager, that's what shows there in drive pool and all my folders. So drive pool can do some pretty interesting things. I'm actually gonna do a separate video on all of the drive pool features, but it can replicate data across drive for redundancy in case one of them dies. You can literally just pull it out and plug another one in. It has some additional benefits over a traditional RAID setup in the fact that you can just drop any size hard drives in to expand the pool, which is something that RAID doesn't allow you to do very easily. All Windows Storage Spaces doesn't allow you to do that very easily as well. And you can also set up as many pools as you like. So I've got one with two old 500 gigabyte hard drives in there for an archive disk, which I use to back up things that I'm not gonna use very often as in archive. Down here is the all the files that are being used at the moment and their current transfer speeds. But if we just head into settings quickly, which isn't there, it is over here in pool options so it can do read stripping so if you have your data replicated across two drives it can read both drives at the same time making the reads a lot faster file protection that's where we go into folder duplication is the one that i'm using so i've got the backups so these are image backups we have the backup software program which i'll show you in a second so all of these are duplicated across two drives which means if one drive fails all the data is saved on another drive. So that is absolutely fine. We can lose a drive and still have these backed up. Now, in order to back up everything, you would need double the amount of space. So I've been quite selective with the stuff that I want duplicated. So we've got image backups, which of course are very important. Uh, bat files, these are things that I use to run in the background and things like that. So don't worry too much about those. And of course, pictures, which are irreplaceable. Of course, these three folders are also uploaded to the cloud, so it's the 321 backup rule. Three copies, two local, one off site. Now, I can't do that with the entire server because there is 3.45 terabytes of space remaining out of the 23.2 terabyte drive. I actually calculated how long it would take to upload all of this to the cloud on my current 15 to 20 megabit upload speed. It would take the best part of a year, a year and a half. So I decided. That is not a good idea. And we will replicate locally the stuff that is important. So there are a lot more features with Drive Pool. But I'll go into the features of Drive Pool in another video because it can be quite in depth. There's another product from StableBit, StableBit Scanner. And that is very useful software that I hope that I never need because what it does is it checks your hard drives periodically to check their health. And if it notices any smart failures what it does is it actually works with drive pool. So if there are any smart failures or it looks like the hard drive is about to die, it will eject the drive from the drive pool and then spread that data across the free space remaining across the other drives. So it will offload all the data to good drives, eject the bad drive from the drive pool and then await further instruction. It also sends you an email to let you know that it's done that that you've had a drive failure or about to have a drive failure. So there's a lot more things that StableBit Scanner can do and I'll go into that in another video as well. I think I'll make a whole StableBit video thing. The next piece of software from StableBit is called StableBit Cloud Drive. There we go, StableBit Cloud Drive. StableBit Cloud Drive allows you to pull all the storage space you have from various different cloud storage 
platforms. So I only have Google Drive, but what it allows you to do is to create a hard drive on your machine that acts and functions as a normal hard drive. You copy files to it or from it or read them, however, it caches them locally and then uploads them in the background. And then when it's done, it clears out the cache, which is all very nice. So I can have it function like a normal hard drive. I don't have to say make a backup file and then upload that manually to my cloud storage. So if we take a look here in Google Drive, I've got one gigabyte, uh, one gigabyte, one terabyte set up, which is, oh sorry, 700 gigabytes set up on a one terabyte storage package from Google. And on there I have the backup save, so images, backups and pictures as well. It can just copy them to that drive and then it will upload them automatically without having to worry too much about that. And as I said, it can pull all your available data from various different cloud platforms. And I'll go into that in a bit in another video, the whole stable bit video. The next piece of software I wanna show you is quite interesting, but it is largely redundant now because CCleaner can actually do most of what this did. So this is called Belvedere and it is old software which is not supported anymore. It was literally built once, so it is incredibly buggy. But what it can do is you can set rules. So if I just set a rule for a folder, this beta folder here, because it doesn't matter too much if I mess it up. So we have a folder, we can add a new rule, description, test for YouTube will do. And you can enable, confirm, etc., etc., etc. But you can set various rules. So date created is in the last three days and then if it was created in the last three days you can move it somewhere you can move and rename rename send to recycle bin delete copy open print file custom etc so you can set this to do anything so if it matches the name the extension the size last modified so you can use it to clear out empty cache bins uh, downloads that didn't succeed so i've got a lot of automated downloads on here and some of them fail. And when they fail, they don't always get cleaned up properly. It has been superseded by CCleaner now, which I haven't quite got around to setting up. CCleaner is also installed, believe it or not. And if you don't know what CCleaner does, then check it out, because it's pretty awesome. It can clean up all of your empty cache files, empty, uh, no, we're not going to do that. It cleans up all the leftover files and temporary files from other applications and things like that. Pretty cool software. But what it can do is also do everything that that Belvedere application did. Instead of using Belvedere, you can use CCleaner and go to Options, Advanced, not Advanced, Include, add your own separate file, so we'll go for the archive again. No, not the archive, we'll go for the beta. So we'll go for the beta, and then you can include files and delete files older than such and such. So you can do pretty much the same thing in CCleaner as you can in Belvedere, at least for my use case anyway. Belvedere has a bit more flexibility in terms of renaming and moving files as well. But definitely have CCleaner installed, whether it's the free one or the pro one. The next thing I use is called Remote Launcher Server. This is an Android application and companion app for PC. And you can send commands to the PC using your Android phone. Now we'll cover that in a video I'm currently making about turning an old tablet or Android device into a universal remote control. But the short version is you can configure launchers. I've only got one, which is Reboot Computer. So I can reboot the server from my Android device if it's having problems. Next is Next PVR. Next PVR is the PVR service that I use for Kodi. So from here, this is the back end, so I don't really use it on the server, but this is just a demonstration. It connects to an external aerial and we can get live TV pumped through the aerial through the server, which runs around the whole house and can get picked up by Kodi. All the PVR stuff is handled on the server, which is pretty cool. So that runs in the background. So another thing I use is TeamViewer for remote access when I'm not at home. I do have a VPN set up on the router so I can access the local network when I'm not here. But sometimes that messes up or sometimes on certain networks it doesn't allow me to connect to the VPN. But TeamViewer always allows you to connect and it does have file transfer management and things like that so you can access your files when you're not 
here. And the free version is pretty feature packed. And just remember to set up two-factor authentication on that because they did have a security scare about a year and a half ago and it was pretty bad. It actually bypassed the two-factor authentication. But everything seems to be okay now. Next is WAMP Server. WAMP Server allows you, it doesn't look very exciting here, but allows you to run a web server on a local machine. So I've got a tablet which has our mill plan on it, which is hosted on a web server so that we can just look up the mill plan on any device by going to the appropriate web page. Next is Plex. Plex runs on the server so that we can access all of our media from outside the house. Now we can do this with Kodi, but it requires the machine to be on all the time. And Kodi really isn't the best at doing that. This is what Plex excels at. So we use Plex for Chromecast, for things, for screens that don't have any smart features or anything like that. So Plex and Chromecast work very really well together and that allows us to stream all across the house without having to run Kodi on separate Android boxes and things like that. So we use Plex almost exclusively for viewing outside the house and the occasional Chromecast to a screen that doesn't support anything fancy. So this server is running Windows 10 and it pretty much does everything I need it to. The only thing that really annoys me about Windows 10 is the forced Windows 10 updates, which you cannot turn off for love nor money. Even deferring them doesn't stop them. It doesn't defer them like it should. You don't defer me like you should. In the future, I'd like to have a lot of this virtualized so that we can just restart certain things pretty easily and have the server handle virtualization. Probably go for Windows Server then and Windows 10 on the local machines. Next is the backup solution. On here, I've got running EaseUs to do backup free, which really doesn't lack any features from the paid for version except it is so good that I run it on all my machines and I probably will pay, purchase the pro version just to support these guys because this is fantastic software. So I've got a bunch of files going on here on schedule so they back up nightly at 5 in the morning, 2 in the morning and then there's a weekly one to the cloud at 4 in the morning. There is a bunch of other stuff you can do with it so you can back up an entire disk or just a partition. You can back up individual files you can back up the entire system. You can back up, do a smart backup, never really used that, I haven't used the email. You can clone a machine to a new one. So what you can do is take your existing Windows install, create a brand new PC build and just clone it from one machine to the other without any problems because switching the hard drive over gives you a blue screen from Windows, but this will allow you just to clone it and it adjusts some configuration things but allows you to boot and it just works. Well actually that's the system clone that does that and the regular clone will clone a regular drive. I'm not too sure what the difference is. I don't know why clone wouldn't run a system clone but anyway but yeah it does just work because I've done it once or twice. Let's take a quick look at the tools. You can view logs, create an emergency disk or media so you can boot into the recovery environment without having to have an actual working operating system which is pretty cool. Wipe data, check image, Enable pre-OS, not entirely sure what that is. iSCSI indicator, mount, unmount hard drives, things like that. But if you were to set up a new backup, you would select this partition backup, select the drive you wish to backup or the partition. You want that, you can give it a name, set a schedule. So one time, daily, weekly, monthly, and then you can go to the backup options. None of this is enabled in the free version but I'm not missing any of those features. The image reserve strategy, you can set it to save multiple copies of the backup just in case. I normally have two copies of the backup saved in case one of them is corrupt. And last but no means the least is Play On. Now I was a bit skeptical about the software, but it's pretty cool. It captures videos from your video streaming service. Now it's kind of gray area software because it may be breaking a few copyright laws, but it seems to be supported by all the major players and I haven't had any issues with it. It is paid for software. They don't offer a free one or a free trial. So you kind of just have to take the risk. So I've tried it with Amazon Prime. Let's have a look here. So if we go to settings, uh, not media library, channel, is it channels? Yeah, so you put in your signing information here. Obviously I'm blurring mine out, but you put your signing information in there and then you can queue up 
shows to be recorded from those streaming services, which is pretty cool if you're worried about those shows disappearing. Now, I only can do one show at a time, and it kind of plays the media in its own little browser and does its own screen grab and audio grab. So it's not 100% legitimate, but it does work pretty well. And that is a rundown of the main software that I use on my server all of the time. Thanks for watching guys. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you disliked it, there's a button for that too. Hope you got some ideas from this. If you want to see me go in depth anymore on any of those softwares that I mentioned, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, keep playing.